So here I am standing in the king's chamber of the Great Pyramid. Now this stone box, in my opinion, is not a sarcophagus because I'm six foot four and I can't fit in this box without bending my knees. So if I can't fit in this box, why make a box this tiny? Could the, is it that the pharaoh was that small? I don't know, I'm not sure, but it doesn't make sense when every, all the other sarcophagus are massive and this one is smaller than me, okay? Interesting. And what's great about this is you can actually see a corner of this has been snapped off. And if you look across the room, if you actually go, get a chance to go with Egypt with me, you'll see where this thing impacted the wall across the room. A huge energy spike happened right at the point of this box. Now, what's interesting about this box, it's the same exact dimensions as the Ark of the Covenant. Pretty interesting. My hypothesis, not any fact. If you look into the biblical tale of the Ark of the Covenant, and you understand what kind of power it actually housed, and there have been attempts to reproduce the Ark, which were successful in modern science at a university. One doctor created, scientist created, and it put off so much power, they had to shut it down. So it actually, scientifically, it was sound. Underneath the Great Pyramid used to be aquifers of water, running water underneath the crystal granite, okay? Now, when you run water under magnetized crystal granite, you create something called physiostatic electricity, which then rises up into the pyramid structure. Some of that water passed, was, was purposely flowed, in my opinion, into the queen's chamber to create a hydrogen extractor or uh, electrolysis for hydrogen to separate hydrogen from the, from the H2O, okay? That's for a communication device that I'll talk about in a minute. The rest of it then would flow up into the uh, grand gallery, which would create, which had these resonating chambers which these resonating rods are now missing. You can see the slots going up into the king's chamber. They're gone now. And then that energy would then be stepped up inside the king's chamber and then pushed up through the apex and then sent out as wireless power around Egypt. An obelisk would then collect that energy, that ambient energy, and channel it. And if you had a jet with a cable on it, you can connect it to a light bulb, you can connect it to your electroplating machines, or whatever you needed electricity for, and you had wireless power, okay? Now, what's also interesting is you can see here, the speed of light in the vacuum, 299,792, 458 meters per second, okay? Which is pretty interesting seeing that the ge geographic coordinates, I'm sorry, are 29.979248 north. So how can the speed of light in meters per second equal the actual geographic location of the Grand Gallery leading into the King's Chamber? Well, that's because we had meters in ancient times. Meters were not discovered more recently as we thought. They were only rediscovered, or the person that rediscovered them went and found some of this, protocuneiform. This is a protocuneiform metric system dating back prior to Mesopotamia. And this was found actually in Mesoamerica. <laughs> so what in the world is proto-cuneiform me metric system being discovered in the Americas when we know that Sumeria is supposed to be the cradle of civilization all the way in Mesopotamia coming out of Iraq. Pretty interesting. So the metric system is ancient. It's super ancient. So the people who try to debunk the fact that it's just a, co it's just a coincidence that the speed of light is the same geographic location as the Grand Gallery, you can debunk the debunkers with the fact that we already had the metric system, and it's actually well known. It's just that nobody has found it. But I found it years ago, and I talk about it a lot. So what is the power here? Let's talk about more circumstantial evidence that these beings came here with advanced knowledge. I looked into the mathematics in the Great Pyramid, and I found a lot of incredible correlations, okay? You can calculate a lot of things based on the structure itself. So what thought that he took this pyramid, and he said, I want for the future, I want this to be a time capsule of knowledge. And what I want to do is I want to take all this information, the information about all this stuff, and I want to compile it into the actual building structure itself so that in a future time, which is now, mankind can decipher it and realize how incredibly we were and that this came from advanced knowledge. The mean distance to the sun is half the length of the diagonal of the base times 10 to the sixth power. It will give you the average distance to the sun. You can calculate the distance to the sun from the Great Pyramid. The mean distance to the sun, you can also do it this way. The height of the pyramid times 10 to the ninth power represents the mean radius of the Earth and the orbit around the sun, or its astronomical unit. You can measure the AU. The AU is the distance from the Earth to the sun, and you can multiply that out, and depend, depending on how many AUs you have, it'll tell you how far you are away from the sun in the solar system. 
You can also calculate the mean distance to the moon. The length of the Jubilee Passage times 7 times 10 to the 7th power is the mean distance to the moon. That's incredible. The sun's radius can be calculated. Twice the perimeter of the bottom of the granite coffer times 10 to the 8th power is the sun's mean radius. Okay, I mean, how can, how can they know this? How can they know that it's 427,316 miles is the radius of the sun st from standing on Earth, looking up at the sky? The Earth's polar radius. The sacred cubit times 10 to the 7th power equals the polar radius of the Earth. That's the Earth's orbit. Polar radius is going pole to pole this way. Not this way, but they can calculate it this way. It's all built into the Great Pyramid, okay? The Earth's polar radius. The pyramid embodies a scale of a ratio of 1 by 43,200. So the pyramid itself is a scale of the Earth's size. You scale the pyramid, you scale Earth down by 43,200, 432 hertz. That's the resonant frequency, that's the best resonant to listen to music. You scale it down, what do you get? To that radius, that ratio, you get the size of the Earth. So as you take the Great Pyramid at Giza and you take it and scale it up 43,200 times, you get the size of the planet Earth itself. And guess what, guys? It's a sphere. All right, just in case you didn't know. <laughs> I know this is a lot of math, but what I'm trying to prove to you here, circumstantial evidence. These beings had advanced knowledge. Now, this is why I wrote the Black Knight Satellite documentary. Because in order to get these calculations, you need a satellite in orbit. You can't do this without a satellite in orbit, and this satellite has been in orbit for a long time. Because why? This satellite was the all-seeing eye of Enlil. And Lil knew what was going on on the planet at all times. He knew population centers. He knew the size of populations. He knew the size of crops on the planet, on a planetary scale. And when people would act up, or the people got too loud in one area, or they started acting too wild, he would just say, call the humans. And he would send somebody to spray something on their fields to kill all their crops. Sounds like chemtrails in ancient times. We had the chemtrails already, sorry. They came through and wiped them out. They would just kill people off to control the populations. But this all-seeing eye, how did he have this? This is the eye of Sauron in the Lord of the Rings. Well, the eye actually exists. There's actually a Sumerian cylinder scroll that depict two beings talking to each other using this technology with wings in the sky. In my opinion, that is the Black Knight. Also, we discovered that the constellation, the Boetus constellation, is actually... And Lils, he owns the Boethus constellation. The Mesopotamian gods attribute the ownership of the Boethus constellation where Epsilon is located to Enlil. What's interesting about that? Well, when you look at the Boethus constellation, there's actually a giant void in there of empty space. So much empty space, it's an enormous void. There's not even dust in this space. Michio Kaku was quoted as saying that by, after observing this constellation, him and other theoretical physicists, it appears to be a cloaked advanced civilization, okay? A cloaked advanced, now why is that important? Well, it's important because of this. The Black Knight satellite signal that's been decoded by individual people multiple times over the years, over the course of over 100 years, all come up with the same conclusion. It's giving us the location of the Boethus constellation. So we have an, an Anunnaki god on Earth engaging mankind, building civilizations here, which they're now gone, but there's a satellite still orbiting this planet in a polar orbit, which you would need a polar orbit to make these calculations. The other thing you have to understand is a polar orbit can do. So the Earth itself is, um, is massive. And so if you're in an equatorial orbit, you can't capture the entire planet. But when you go into a polar orbit, you can make this calculation. The, the pyramid, the Great Pyramid, is the average height of the land mass on Earth. The average height of the peaks of the land mass on Earth. The average height. Now, you can't do this just by sitting in one place in the middle of a desert and figure out how high this is. So, what you need, a satellite that can actually scan the planet this way as it spins on its axis. And as it spins, you're scanning for topographical data. You're calculating, you're counting every single peak and hill and mountaintop on the entire planet, which we can do today. We've already done it. And then, you have to divide that by the height, you get the average height by the number of, 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 of uh, mountains and hills to get the average height, and then what do you get? Okay, we're gonna build a Great Pyramid to this height. This is the average height of all the land mass. Then, you have, then the Great Pyramid is built at the center of land mass on Earth. Not the center of the Earth, but the center of land mass. Not the center of Earth, the center of land. To do that, another polar orbiting satellite is needed. You need to be able to see everything on Earth, calculate all the mass of land, and where to put that, that pyramid. Boom, right there, that's where it goes. 
So the Great Pyramid has a lot of calculations. The precise definition of the royal cubit as it relates to the Earth, the size and shape of the Earth, the mass and density of the Earth is all calculated in there, the gravitational constant, the escape velocity from Earth to attain an orbit. What is the main reason for the 33rd degree Masons? The main reason is not to, you know, everybody thinks that there is some kind of crazy thing. It's actually space travel. 33rd degree Masons is about space travel. That's the ultimate goal because masonry goes all the way back to the Chateau coming out of the land of Kim, the brick masons that had the secret knowledge that was then lost in the mystery schools. It's all about reobtaining the capability of traveling in space. Why do I say that? Because you have to travel 33 times the speed of sound to escape Earth's gravity to get into space. One, 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 you know, if you travel 32, 31, 30, you're not going to escape. There's no escape velocity. You have to travel 33 times the speed of sound to escape into space. That's why the runway in Florida at the Space Coast is runway number 33. You can calculate the significance of the location of the Great Pyramid uh, with the golden ratio, the mass of the sun, the mass of the moon, the mean distance to the sun, and the circumference of the Earth can be calculated. You can calculate the, the size of the, of the Earth from the Great Pyramid uh, uh, stones. The mean distance to the moon, the orbital velocity of the Earth, the orbital velocity of the moon, the metatronic 19-year cycle of the moon's orbit of the Earth, the Lagrange point L1 between the Earth and the moon, the speed of light, and the orbital velocity of the solar system relative to the center of the Milky Way galaxy. All that can be calculated from one structure. Now you tell me where the coincidence is at. <laughs> in America, if you have enough circumstantial evidence, you can put somebody in prison. Okay? So what I'm saying is we have a case here. There's a case that whoever did this, whoever laid out this architectural masterpiece, was most likely not what they call the hairy barbarian or the hominid that came out of the... Now, these people were intelligent, don't get me wrong. I think that our ancestors that were here before us, before we got genetically tinkered with, I think they were wiser than us. Probably spiritually wiser, probably had larger pineal glands, maybe even larger skulls, maybe more in tune with each other, you know, telepathic and all that in tune with nature. I think we lost a lot of that capability after the genetic tinkering. If you like this video and you want to see more amazing content, go ahead and check out the next video on our channel.